What happened on October 7th was that Hamas launched 5,000 missiles at Israel at the city surrounding the Gaza Strip and infiltrated Israel during the bombardment where the military action took place, leaving behind some casualties and taking some hostages from Israel. The Israelis have claimed 1,200 civilian deaths on their side along with the propaganda of 40 beheaded babies and rape and murder at a music festival which have been refuted by independent sources. Ever since October the 7th, the following days have been a tough one on the Gaza Strip. But before that, it's better to discuss the context of the attack. Most people have labeled it as a terrorist attack and have demanded to condemn this attack. The reality is Hamas are freedom fighters who have attacked Israel in the context of 70 years of occupation by Israel on the Palestinian land. Gaza Strip, as many of you would know, has been blockaded for 16 years now, for about 16 years now, and they were being starved to death by the, by the Jews. And before they could starve to death, before they could be starved to death, Hamas had decided to take action. Israel had decided to retaliate with damage on mind and not accuracy, and that is what we have been seeing the following days since October the 7th. About 200 airstrikes have been done on the Gaza Strip. On Gaza has already dropped around 25,000 tons of explosives. The explosive force of the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima in Japan, 1945, was 12,000 tons. So you can safely say that Israel has already dropped as much as two of those atomic bombs on Gaza so far. The power of such bombardment equivalent to the two nuclear bombs. In just a few days, they bombarded, destroying and massacring the Gaza civilians. Thousands of civilian casualties, a third of them being children, and this is still going on. Medical supplies, ambulances, you, dead babies being pulled out of the rubble. Ambulances and hospitals bombarded, mosques, holy sites bombarded. The response from Israel has been that the Prime Minister of the terrorist nation, apartheid nation, Benjamin Netanyahu, has decided to use the biblical language to call the Palestinians Amaleks. And the nations have to unite with Israel to completely obliterate this enemy to the Jews, invoking biblical passages, quoting uh, books like Isaiah to dehumanize the Palestinians. We are seeing live dehumanization of the Palestinian people in front of our very own eyes, with Palestinian protests being called Hamas protests, pro Palestinian cause being a labeled as a terrorist cause, pro Hamas cause, with Israeli Defense Minister calling the Palestinians human animals or in an attempt to desensitize the world to the Palestinian plight. Now the mainstream media is calling to condemn the October the 7th as a terrorist attack on Jewish people and worse as bad or worse than the Holocaust that the Jews had suffered. The reality is what happened. Any civilian casualty is condemnable if proven to be done intentionally by any entity. And the reality is that Hamas attack was in the context of a 70 years worth of persecution, occupation and ethnic cleansing and genocide of the Palestinian people. And these were people who decided to rebel and fight back. And now these are being labeled as terrorists. This to, to quote Finkelstein. This was a very hard week for me. I'm good at assembling facts. I'm good at putting them in a logical, coherent order. I can't say I have the greatest moral judgment. It's not bad, but moral judgment is like any other faculty. It requires study, reflection. You know, it means knowing the whole of moral philosophy. And I'm not competent in that area. And most of my adult life, I was a kind of, you might call, acolyte, disciple of Noam Chomsky. I think it's fair to say he was for 40 years a very close friend of mine. For reasons which I can't get into now, he wasn't available for moral judgment. Not the facts, the facts I feel confident about, but the moral judgment. How does one, if I can use the expression, position oneself morally in light of what happened October 7th? I really didn't know. I was very confused. When people asked me, how were you doing? I would say, well, physically, I'm very tired, but morally, I'm much more tired. I'm struggling with it. 
So I went back to American history. I went back to American history. I wanted to see what was, just briefly for your listeners, because I don't know how, uh, Ameri- in the, whether it's an American audience or an international audience. So in the American context, we had slave revolts. And the slave revolts were quite bloody. So, for example, the best known slave revolt in the U.S., or the largest, was Nat Turner in 1831, the Nat Turner Rebellion. Now, Nat Turner was a religious, he black, obviously. He was a religious fanatic. He was a zealot. He was convinced that this rebellion was inspired by God, and all of his actions were sanctioned, approved by God. He gave the order to his confederates to kill all white people. Kill all white people in your path. And a lot of white people were killed. Scores of white people were killed. By current terminology, we'd call them innocents were killed. I wanted to know, how did the abolitionists, those who opposed slavery, what mm-hmm. kind of moral judgment did they render on Nat Turner? And so I went back. One of the greatest of the abolitionists, white, uh, was a fellow named uh, Garrison, William Lloyd Garrison. He was the editor of a newspaper called The Liberator. And I went to see, what did he write? And I have to say to me, have to say to you, it was very consoling to me because he did what I did after Gaza. Number one, he said, I told you so. We warned you and warned you and warned you and warned you, we meaning the abolitionists, this was going to happen. Number two, He denounced all the hypocrites, the pious, self-righteous hypocrites who were denouncing what happened in Nat Turner's rebellion. And number three, and I hope your listeners will pay close attention, number three, even though he said what happened during the Nat Turner Revolt was horrible. It was very clear. He never once condemned the slave revolt. He did not. He did not. I posted on my Substack. I posted on my Twitter account the full statement by William Lloyd Garrison. He did not. And the Nat Turner Rebellion, and I described it to you just a moment ago quite accurately, it now occupies an honored place in American history. It does. And William Lloyd Garrison is a revered figure. There were three, there were basically William Lloyd Garrison, Charles Sumner, uh, uh, Thaddeus Stevens and Garrett Smith, there are a few, but he's one of the revered figures of the abolitionist movement to end slavery. So uh, I felt assured, even in the absence of my mentor, Professor Chomsky, I felt confident that I had applied even though my moral faculty is not finely owned. I applied the right judgment in this situation. I've gotten some very ugly backlash. Uh, Some people who meant a lot to me in life. Uh, However, I... If the judgment is right, I won't retreat. He was giving the analogy of abolition movement where black slaves 
had decided to rebel and fight back. This was an attack in the context of them being enslaved and persecuted and not wanting to be enslaved and persecuted anymore. The same analogy, analogy applies here very, very firmly. You can already see the death tolls rising on Palestinian people every single day, every single second as the, as the bombardments continue, as the water supply and electricity are being cut off and the internet being cut off so that no one can see what is happening to the Palestinian people.